What does it take to become a doctor? These are the real life stories of McMaster University's med students. This episode of Med Students. Dar gets his first patient. Rapinder survives pediatrics. And Bren Lee takes on general surgery. Well done. Not bad for a woman. <laughs> With the help of her parents, third-year student Brinley Barbeau is juggling motherhood, med school, and long-distance marriage. Yeah, this is pretty typical. I usually get up around 5.30, start things off, usually try and eat, take my lunch, get my daughter ready, get myself ready, <laughs> then be out the door by 6.30. Yeah, just for Let's go watch Mimi get in the car. It's okay. Bye. Life is pretty demanding, but Bryn Lee has just one more rotation to get through before she graduates. General surgery at Branford General Hospital. Surgeons have a reputation for being pretty tough on med students. This morning, Bryn Lee is assisting Dr. Ian Kesserum. He's a taskmaster. She's got to be on her toes. You're the chief. <laughs> You're, the chief. You're the leader. <laughs> Dr. Kesserum's first patient has a suspicious lump in her breast and needs a biopsy. I've never seen a breast biopsy done before. Dr. Rapinder Saucy is in the midst of a 24-hour on-call shift for pediatrics. You know, the fatigue starts to set in a little bit, and uh, you hold on to your, uh, your vacation times in your calendar and you mark off the days. But, uh, you know, the whole reason we're doing this is because this is what we wanted to go into. So I try to have as much fun at work as I can. Clinical rotations can be exhausting, but Rapinder has found ways to survive. Never stand when you can sit. Never sit when you can lie down. Eat when you can. Sleep when you can. Never let them see you eat or sleep. Those are the first five. You never told me these. No, I gotta give you my list. Okay. He loves to share his survival rules with whoever will listen, like med student Christine. So what are the other rules? Oh, I wish I had them all committed to memory. Yeah. Never talk about patients in public areas. You never know who's listening. And never talk about your staff in public areas, because you never know who's listening. You make a mess, clean up the mess. If you make your seniors look good, they'll make you look good. Don't try to be a hero. Know when you're in over your head. Know when to ask for help. Bryn Lee stands by as Dr. Kesserum sets up for the biopsy. But before starting on the patient, Dr. Kesserum starts in on Bryn Lee. <laughs> you love bump? Describe it. Okay, it's it's not very. You don't feel with one finger. You feel with both hands. Both hands. Yeah. It's it's not very well defined. It feels sort of nodular. It's at about twelve o'clock. That's twelve o'clock. That's twelve o'clock. Okay, where? Uh, superior to the areola. Okay. Be very specific when you find something. Okay. All right. Because it's absolutely important for communication purposes. Okay. All right. Shine this light on for me. Sorry, you want the light on? Yeah, just a little bit there. Is that better or worse? Worse, Jesus. Did you put that light on there? I did, I moved it. Holy Christ. Yeah. 
Rupinder's first call takes him to the hospital nursery. Sorry, are we waking you up? Anthony is 12 hours old and may be having trouble breathing. So the worry was that maybe had a little bit of nasal respiratory flaring. distress, nasal, nasal flaring. flaring, and a little bit of intercostal indrawing. Uh, indrawing. Yeah. yeah. Respirate was about 56. I'm not seeing any of the nasal flaring now, mm -hmm. so whatever you're seeing before is resolved. So cool. Are you chilling? Oh, you're just shivering on some storm, aren't you? Yeah, right now, baby just looks fantastic. Adorable little thing, especially after you know 12 hours. It's had a pretty rough day, so uh, I give baby a chance to have some time with mom and. Uh, Statistics being what they were, the baby will probably do just fine. Okay, so we can take baby back to mom. So what do you know about breasts anatomically? Um, they're composed of, they're on the pectoralis major muscle. Well, there are basically three types of tissue. Mm -hmm. There's ducts, mm -hmm. lobules, and supporting stroma. Okay. That's all you need to know. Okay. Okey-dokey. Bryn Lee has made it through the biopsy surgery and the constant grilling. I like when the, when the surgeons kind of get you to think and ask you questions and kind of make you think through the whole process. So Dr. Kestrom was doing that, and that was helpful. So, yeah. But she's not off the hook yet. She'll be back in the OR with Dr. Kestrom this afternoon. Excision lesion. So yeah, I'm imagining that that's a, a lipoma removal on the, on the back, which is a lipoma is like a collection of fat sort of underneath the skin. So it looks like uh, that's the next thing we'll be doing. And I've never seen that done either. It's the first day of clerkship for second year med student Dardal Achahi. His wife, Michelin, makes sure it's not a bad hair day. Why, like, not stupid? <laughs> As a clerk, Dar will have his own patience. He wants to make a good impression. Do you usually wear a tie to work? Not usually, no. In fact, I'm not very good at tying them up either. <laughs> but I thought it's the first day, so. We've been married uh, for just just under two years. I need some adjustments, do I? Yeah. I thought so. All right. I'll go back and do this tie thing again. I, I'm very dependent on Michelin now. She's paying the bills. <laughs> Basically, she's putting me through school. So I'll phone you. I'll try and phone you anyway during the day, but if I get the call, I'll phone you right away. What did you do this morning? What did I do this morning? Yeah. I got up early, put some clothes on. Dar meets up with the other new clerks for orientation. Yeah, so basically I, I forgot everything we went to. Life is about to get very complicated very fast. Call starts uh, weekdays, 8 till sort of when you're done seeing your patients the next day, noonish, whenever we can get you out. Thursday. I guess we don't find out who went Survivor then. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Whoa! Rapinder's next patient is having respiratory problems. You want to sit up so I can look in your ears? A sick, tired toddler needs special handling. Look here. There we go. Perfect. I didn't run towards him. I didn't say, okay, well, I'll get the history from mom. And then all of a sudden, this gigantic guy is going to come and descend upon you. Started engaging him first, got down at his level, sort of worked my way towards him a little bit. Can you open your mouth big for me? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nice and big, nice and big. Stick your tongue out. Make a dinosaur noise for me. Sounds good. That works a lot better than sort of swooping in on a kid and scaring the crap out of them, which occasionally happens. What was that for? Had enough? Basically what I'm doing now, I've gotten the history from, uh, from the parents and what little history I could get from the young fella. And uh, I'm going to put it together in a note so I can present that in a sort of a, a more clear and, and focused form to my attending physician as well. That becomes part of the chart. So this is the part where uh, I get accused of writing novels. So far, Brinley's holding her own with the surgeons. 
depending on uh, how Dr. Kessram feels, sometimes they'll actually get you to do, do the excision, um, or I might just be assisting, maybe just doing the suturing at the end. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see how comfortable he feels. She's introduced to the next patient by Dr. David Hiroma. Hi there. Hi, Brenda. Hi there. This Hi. is Robert Simpson. Hi, Hi nice to meet you. Robert's had a lipoma uh -huh. on his back. Oh, wow. And if you come over here, mm -hmm. if you just examine it, just mm -hmm. sort of get the measurements. It's quite firm, probably about, yeah. about 10 or 12 centimeters yeah. in length and probably about seven or eight in width, and it's quite firm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. going to be waking up with bedhead every day. <laughs> Clerkship is a time for students to learn how to apply their knowledge to real patients. It's also a time to learn about pagers. Yeah, I'm 38, 12. Emergency codes. The intern that's on call that day will have a code pager. Security. I was fine until I had to remember all this stuff. <laughs> and finding your way around an unfamiliar hospital. Uh, we're looking for a reef. Do you know if that's a reef there? Dar and classmate Bobby Malicki track down their supervisor, internal medicine specialist Dr. Paul Keith. Normally, you would have been on a call with the team last night and you would have picked up your own patients, mm -hmm. but because uh, you weren't, we'll assign you some patients this out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Finally, it's time to focus on medicine. So these are our medical students. This is just their first day on internal medicine, but not their first day ever in medical school. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, they're just going to listen and ask questions, okay? Hi. Have you been in the hospital before for this type yeah. of pain? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Dar's first patient has been brought to the ER with chest pain. What I like about the idea of being a doctor is what essentially is a type of community service. I mean, you're, you're helping people get better health or even in, in the cases where you can't get a person better health, you're, you're giving them the tools that they can use to cope with, with their everyday problems. Yeah, did you, have you done anything differently in the past few days, like change your medications? No, I haven't. Okay, so everything's, and you haven't felt any differently in the past few no. days either? No. Okay. As far as life and death decisions go, I'm confident with the fact that I won't have to make any right now, and that's a, that's a good feeling. Mrs. Duncan will be moved to the internal medicine unit for further testing. We're going to keep her probably till tomorrow, all right? Oh, yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I'd rather go home today. You'd rather go home today? Yeah, if I could. We'll talk to you a bit later, okay? Okay. Yep. Bryn Lee gets ready for another surgery and another go-round with Dr. Kessram. Start in the middle of the workout work and don't come back the way you started. Good. Next stick. What's that? That's it. Get rid of that stick. Don't put it back in there. Here, I'll take it. But instead of giving her a hard time, Dr. Kessram gives Bryn Lee an extraordinary opportunity. Yes, yes. Well, I think I drew a line this way. He teaches her how to make the first incision. Yeah. So you're going to make an incision like that. So cut along the dotted line. <laughs> Like paint by number? <laughs> okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. Yeah, we'll make it deeper because that's not being through there. Okay. That's good. Layer by layer, man. That's time. You gotta press the button first. Yeah, I am. It's not. You're kidding. Not every surgeon gives their student a chance to do more than assist. You just have to kiss it. Yeah, just like that. So take your finger mm -hmm. and do this. Yep. Okay, and then just sort of see if you can whip it out. Scooping out the lump turns out to be a little tricky. Dr. Kessram gives her a hand. Mm. It's really big. Good. Rapinder has supervising pediatrician Dr. Moyes Ladeni examine Josh. Can I, can I take your, can you take your shirt off for a second? 
No. Can we lift it up? No. Oh, show, boy. Show me your belly. Show me your muscles your again, huh? Come on. Rapinder gets to confirm his observations and learn from Dr. Ledeni's style. One of the big bumps. Look up, look up to the light there. I, I think one of the most valuable things about being on call and working closely with the staff physician is that every single staff physician has a different style with the kids. It's, it's fascinating how, you know, one physician might approach a kid in a completely different way from another. You can't get that out of a textbook. So right now, guys, he's having an asthma attack, okay? Josh will be kept overnight until he's breathing normally. Yeah. Brinley and Dr. Kesserim have worked as a team to remove the lump from their patient's back. So that's basically it. So tomorrow I had my academic day, but you're on call tomorrow, so I'll be back in Brantford maybe around 2 o'clock. So Please don't hurry. Oh, <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> I know you'll miss me like a toothache. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can I go home now, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Up on the internal medicine unit, Dar reads Mrs. Duncan's chart. The medicine isn't the hard part, it's reading the chart, that's the hard part, reading the handwritings, learning all the acronyms. So you need to learn that pretty quickly and uh, it can slow you down quite a bit if, if you're not comfortable doing that. He hopes to discover what brought on her chest pain. Mrs. Duncan, I met you downstairs. Yeah. So my name's Dar. Yes, sir. I want to be looking after you for however length of time you're here. I see. And I know you don't want to be here much longer, I guess. So. <laughs> okay. Now, do you have high blood pressure normally? Yes, I do. You do, eh? How long have you had that for? Oh, maybe 10 years. Oh, okay. It sounds pretty good so far. Um, your blood pressure's a little high right now, though. Mm -hmm. But you're still really keen on going home, I guess. Eh? Well, <laughs> see how, how things turn out. Yeah. But... I would prefer being at home. Yeah. Dar has not yet solved his patient's problem, well, but he seems to have made a good impression. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. It's not, I'm still a student, so you can oh, call I'm me Dar. Still a student. Yeah, <laughs> just call me Dar. <laughs> okay. It's the middle of the night, and something very unusual is happening down in pediatrics. Well, it's two in the morning now, and I actually had to check my clock to make sure. Um, things have uh, sort of, don't want to use the Q word, because when you say that, you want to curse yourself for the night, but uh, things have gotten a little bit uh, tonight. And uh, I'm going to zip down to the car and see if I can get a little bit of shut-eye. My favorite hallucinogen is sleep deprivation. I, I liken being on call with a beeper to you trying to sleep with a grenade next to your head. You're sort of looking at it with one eye open, waiting for it to go off. Rapinder rarely gets to sleep for more than an hour before another sick child needs his attention. There you are. How are you doing? Dar presents his patient to Dr. Keith. Her blood pressure was 180 over 102 around noon. Mm -hmm. um, the atenolol was given at around 3, and then we reassessed the blood pressure at 430, but still about 175 over 88. Was she able to walk around today at all, or she hasn't really been up? Yeah, well, well up I, I did walk uh, from my bed in the emergency mm -hmm. out to the front desk. Well, what do you think, Dar? Do you think she can go home? Not today. No. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> thinking about today. You've, you've, you've decided you're going to stay with us, have you? Yes, till tomorrow, anyway. Very good, yeah. very good. And then we yep. should be getting the, um, the echo results back. I gave my assessment, and he agreed with it, and I caught the hypertension. Okay. Yeah, so it was okay. It's a little flavor of what's to come. And I think each year we're just going to, basically the workload just gets a little, you know, double, triples and whatnot. So I think we got a sense of the beginning of the process. I, I think the tie was a good choice. I like the color and I think it looked professional. <laughs> it's uh, 7.30 now. 
And surprisingly, I went to bed about 2.30 or so. So I haven't been paged in the interim, except for one page this morning, which was a false alarm. Um, some people would say, well, you got about, you know, half a day, or sorry, half a night's sleep. And for me, I got a great night's sleep. Uh, when you're on call, if you get two hours or three hours, you're thankful. But I've had somewhere close to five, and that's pretty impressive for being on call. But Rupinder's shift doesn't end until noon. He'll need to fall back on his survival rules to get through the last four hours. Yeah, thanks. There's one thing you learn very quickly in a residency. Caffeine is your friend. And the last and probably most important rule of surviving clinical medicine, when you go home, get a life. Bryn Lee has the afternoon off to spend with her family. Every other weekend, her husband tries to fly in from Sault Ste. Marie. With graduation a few weeks away, Bryn Lee is hoping for a residency placement in Northern Ontario so they can all be together again. <laughs> here we go. Here's two oh, pictures. Mommy will color the yeah, teddy bear. Mommy. It's important Ooh. to spend time with your family. Um, it's just, I, I think, something? medical Hello. school. You can spend you uh -uh. Know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week studying if you wanted and you still wouldn't know everything. So I have to keep I a balance. Like I can't, I can't spend all my time doing school stuff. You know, I, I'm tired of, you know, dividing my time between two places and uh, it'll be nice to be all together. On the next episode of Med Students, Adriana heads to labor and delivery. Sarah tries to keep up with orthopedic surgeons. And Dar deals with an agitated patient. Okay, you have security up there? 